Welcome back. Now that we have both bottom holes drilled and tapped, it's ready to go to the next phase. My parts are anodized and are a little porous, and if I don't wipe off the WD-40 right away, it will stain. So watch me wash my parts. So let's assemble. The two bottom holes are drilled at 250 on the CNC. I think they should be about 265, so if you are experiencing a little difficulty with these bolts being a little tight, feel free to open them up another 64th. The next size drill up from a quarter inch. The next phase, we are going to attach the crank bearing. Before we attach the crank bearing, we need to make sure that the bushing for the crank bearing that is on the lower strut has enough clearance to run the shaft. I'm putting the yoke on a little bit premature here. I think you need to do that a little bit later. So don't look at the yoke that you see on the screen at the present moment. How I'm sliding the crank between that thrust washer and the yoke is actually probably a smart thing to do when you're ready to fit that you're going to need to sand the front face of your yoke so that your crank slides in between. Also, I'm not pleased with the diameter of the hole in my crank. These are lessons learned that I want you to learn from. The 625 hole should be about 624, 624 and a half. It needs to be a tighter fit on the crank shaft. By the way, the pulley that I'm using, you notice that it's a type 3 size instead of the automotive type 4. It's a little more affordable and this machine does not require that much horsepower. Okay, so you can see that the bushing and the lower strut is tight. It needs to be honed out. I noticed that my paper is loaded up with brass, so I'm washing it off with some alcohol. I did not dry it all the way, so you'll see some staining as the brass and alcohol drips down the side. You don't need to do this. I just didn't want to. The paper doesn't need to be changed. It just needs to be cleaned. A wire brush, some alcohol, a rag, many ways to do it. Okay, so that's the size. So now we can fit the crank bushing on that shaft. It's a little tight, but I'd rather have these bushings a little snug and have them wear in under power. Okay, so right now I'm installing the crank pin, which is a 3 8 dowel pin. The standout needs to be less than a half. I'd like it to be about 495. So I took my crank pin over to my disc sander sand it off about um, 20 thousandths and now that we have clearance it doesn't want to rub up against the oak so we're going to install the next and the last bushing which is in the crank bushing as I call it crank bushing assembly I think would be more correct
And it's time to hone that to size. Right now I'm washing and blowing the part clean. Washing it. I use 90% alcohol for most of my part washing. Right here I'm using a, I don't know, I think it's about a 18 or 20 millimeter socket over the shaft so that I can clamp the bushing firmly against the lower strut because that's really what I'm trying to clamp. I don't want to clamp the shaft, but I need the shaft in place to align the inner bushing and the outer bushing. Here I'm just using a pin punch to get access to that transfer punch. One good hit, and we should have a nice little dimple. Now unfortunately in this design, while it's easy to machine and easy to, to assemble, there is going to be repetition of taking pieces of part, drilling, reassembling, transferring the next hole, re disassembling, etc. But by doing it in this process, we are guaranteed a machine that will work even though the tolerance range is very, very wide. Okay, everything's spinning here. Now, I would like to take a note. This is a time when so once the second hole is drilled and tapped, this is the time when you need to make sure that all your shafts are no longer binding. If you need to hone out your bushings a little bit more, feel free to do so. But keep the bushings and the shafts a little bit on the snug side. Make sure you add some lubrication. They will wear in in the first few minutes once you put it on the power. Okay, so now that all the shafts spin freely and all the bolts and all the bushings are installed and honed properly now it's time to put the dowel pins in there are three that need to be put in one into the crank bushing into the lower strut one through the upper strut and into the upper bearing and the third from the base into the lower or bottom bushing. This can be done very precisely on a drill press but it doesn't need to be. 764 drill which is about 110, 109 that leaves plenty of meat for a eighth inch reamer. The dowel pins measure a few tenths oversize and if you just take your time, put a little WD-40 for lubricant during the reaming process, you'll end up with a nice, clean, tight hole. Now what I'm doing here is measuring the depth. Because I have a one inch dowel pin, I want to make sure the hole is at least one inch, preferably about an inch and an eighth, so that the reamer has a place to uh, pack in the chips in front of the hole as opposed to having to clean the hole out several times. So we're getting ready to ream, a little WD-40. I slow my drill down to the slower speed. My quality Harbor Freight NICAD. No, it's not NICAD, it's lithium iron. You'll feel the reamer load up with chips. That's when it's time to pull out and clean those chips off. These reamers can snap. They will bind. It's probably not best to use your fingers to pull the chips off the reamer, but I've been in this business a long time and I'm comfortable with it. Next, it's over to the vise, just for a third hand, so I can hold the part vertical while I install the dowel pin. I want it slightly below the surface of the upper strut. 
And you may be asking you, why are we putting dowel pins in this? I'm going to put the next dowel pin in. I didn't show you, but it's already been drilled and reamed. I realize that my pin punch, even though it's eighth inch, won't go in the five thirty seconds hole. So I'm going to take the extra dowel pin of the three and slide it into the clearance hole to help guide me pressing or pounding that dowel pin in. So back on why we have dowel pins. Once we assemble this and all the shafts spin freely, you can disassemble this machine and reassemble it and you will get the same sliding action fit. So, uh, last dowel pin going in, put my drill and my reamer set together. And we'll press this one in. Now, all that's left is six small holes, two in the bottom, or lower strut on the opposite side and the four holes in the top plate. How you go about doing it is not really critical. There are a couple of ways. You can lay them out, drill them and tap them. You can transfer them. Just make sure that the strut is not hanging off the piece. Here it's loose. It's just for photographic reasons. Also, um, I recommend that you put a standard flat washer between the bracket upper strut and the swivel bracket to guide you in allowing the upper plate to rotate freely and it keeps everything from getting marred up. Um, that's about it. Install the upper file clamp. Use a standard file. Make sure the handle is pointing up. Run the machine. I also highly recommend after you've run in the machine, disassemble it and wherever you see the dimple on the shaft from one of the set screws, put a nice little flat. Gains strength and it also stops the shafts from getting dimpled and when you go to pull them out it will score up the, the bushings. What's left is for you to install a power plant and some type of base, some type of safety switch. My little drill here was 15 bucks at Harbor Freight. It pushes the machine beautifully. I stole the drill chuck off of it for my Makita, and that's it. Have a great day. Good luck.